Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In a letter signed by Cardinal Secretary of State Pietro Parolin, Pope Francis urged participation in the Meeting for Friendship Among Peoples, also known as the Rumini Meeting. The topic for this year's meeting in the Italian seaside town of Rumini is human existence is an inexhaustible friendship. In an address to young people, the Holy Father praised the virtue of genuine friendship. During Sunday's Angelus in St Peter's Square, the Pope also offered his prayers for the efforts of the international community to find a peaceful solution to the crisis in West Africa's Niger. The Holy Father also reiterated his call for reducing military spending to provide for growing humanitarian needs. The President of the Pakistani Catholic Bishops' Conference, Archbishop Joseph Arshad, gave a first-hand description of the anguish of those affected by the anti-Christian violence in an interview with Vatican News. On Wednesday, a mob of Muslims attacked a Christian community in eastern Pakistan after accusing two of its members of desecrating the Quran. Several Christian churches were vandalised and dozens of homes were set on fire in Jaranwala in Faisalabad's industrial area. Archbishop Arshad pleaded for peace among Pakistan's citizens and asked that those responsible for attacks against Christians be brought to justice. On Saturday, Nicaraguan police evicted six Jesuits from their residence on the campus of the university run by the congregation. This comes after the Central American University was confiscated by the regime. The eviction of the priests was condemned by the Central American province of the Society of Jesus. When police appeared at the Jesuit residence with members of the judiciary, the six members showed the deeds of the property. However, security agents ignored the documents and ordered the Jesuits to leave. In the meantime, the university's name was abruptly changed by the regime to Universidad Nacional Casimiro Sotelo Montenegro. This is in honour of a Sandinista student leader who was murdered in 1967. The US State Department on Saturday imposed visa restrictions on 100 more Nicaraguan officials for their role in supporting the oppressive regime of President Daniel Ortega. Secretary of State Antony Blinken wrote on his social media accounts that his office has taken steps to impose visa restrictions on officials who restrict Nicaraguans' human rights and undermine democracy. Blinken called on the regime to unconditionally release Bishop Rolando Alvarez and all those unjustly detained. The prelate is an outspoken critic of the Nicaraguan government and was jailed by the Ortega regime for supposedly helping anti-government protesters. He was sentenced to 26 years in prison after he refused to board a plane carrying exiles to the United States in February. In the US state of Massachusetts, a Catholic school system has brought out a new policy that mandates students to use their names and pronouns given at birth. The new policy also wants students to conduct themselves in a manner that is consistent with their biological sex. This will be enforced in 21 church schools, with over 5,000 students in Worcester, around 45 miles west of Boston, from this fall semester. A statement was issued on the Solemnity of the Assumption and was approved by Bishop Robert McManus of Worcester. Superintendent of Catholic Schools for the Diocese, David Perda, said that although some schools had similar policies, individual situations underscored the need for a single policy. The Cuban Bishops' Conference published its pastoral plan for 2023 to 2030, encouraging Cubans to accompany them in one of the most difficult moments in the history of the country. The pastoral plan calls on believers to have a constant conversion to Jesus Christ on a personal and community level. In the document titled Convert and Believe in the Gospel, the prelates are seeking trust in the Lord. They invite Cubans to seek God to meet again as brothers and sisters. In the document, the prelates said, like the Good Samaritan, let us allow ourselves to be challenged by reality, to reach out to the wounds of others and embrace them to heal, restore and comfort, because this is what the Lord does with each one of us. An American former high school soccer coach who lost his job for publicly praying on the pitch has been reinstated. Joe Kennedy took his grievance to the US Supreme Court last year and the top court has ruled in his favour. This season, he is back at the Bremerton Knights High School football team in Washington State after he prayed on the field with players in 2015, the school district refused to renew his contract. In court, Kennedy argued that his right to pray was protected under the First Amendment. The school district said it was looking forward to moving past the legal distraction and added that it would comply with the court order to treat Kennedy's personal religious conduct the way the district treats all other personal conduct by coaches at football matches. In the US state of California, Republican Party officials have expressed their desire to nix certain anti-abortion 
and same-sex marriage positions from the party platform in the state. This is seen as an attempt to prevent the erosion of party supporters in California, which is increasingly known for supporting left-wing ideals. This proposal was adopted by a party committee last month and could be voted on at the Republican Fall Convention in Anaheim. Although the draft of the proposal highlights support for traditional family values, it has removed the definition of marriage as a union between one man and one woman. If the proposal is approved, the modifications could shake up things before the presidential elections next year. It is slated to be put to a vote at the state party's fall convention from the 29th of September to the 1st of October. It is aimed at aligning the state party's views with that of more voters in the state. US intelligence sources are warning that the Islamic State insurgency is once again reading its head in Syria. Data from the European Council of Foreign Relations reveals that in 2014 alone, around 40,000 people left various countries to join the Islamic State, of which 5,000 were Europeans, including men and women. ISIS runs its operations from northeastern Syria to northern Iraq and imposed its brutal rule on nearly 8 million people from 2014 to 2017. Meanwhile, the rights group International Christian Concern has expressed concern over the expansion of another violent extremist group, the Allied Democratic Forces, operating primarily out of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This outfit, linked to the Islamic State, is also gaining power in Central Africa. The outfit is infamous for targeting Christians in their violent campaigns to establish an Islamic caliphate in the region. Authorities said that at least 11 labourers were killed and two others were hurt in a terrorist attack on Sunday in Pakistan's Khyber Patunkwa province bordering Afghanistan. Deputy Commissioner of North Waziristan, Rehan Gul Katak, said terrorists detonated explosives near Gul Mirkot in Shawal Tehsil late on Saturday night and blew up a vehicle carrying 16 labourers. Katak said as many as 11 working in an under construction government building were killed on the spot, while two others were critically injured. Three workers have gone missing. Pakistan is battling economic woes, natural disasters and insurgency from across the border. An American software company has created an artificial intelligence project that provides in-depth insight into Catholic teachings based on the magisterium of the church. Longbeard's Magisterium AI brings the teaching of the church to people across the world in their native language and on any device. The primary targets of the AI software are faith formators and teachers. Magisterium AI also provides contextual information on church history and the reasons behind its doctrines. It will also be able to generate theological reflections and summarise church documents. Ultimately, Longbeard will also incorporate the entire library of the Pontifical Oriental Institute into its database. The United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees has announced that it is suspending all of its services in Lebanon's largest refugee camp for Palestinians. The agency took this decision to protest against the presence of gunmen on its facilities. The decision went into effect on Friday at the Ain El Hilwe refugee camp in Sidon. The camp witnessed street fights between the Fatah group of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and two rival Islamic militant groups, Jund al-Sham and Shabab al-Muslim. The clashes took place on July the 30th, after Fatah accused its rivals of gunning down a senior military official. Officials in Spain's Canary Islands said on Sunday that firefighters are battling odds to control the spread of wildfires. Thousands of people have been moved to safe places as the fires threaten homes and buildings in a mountainous area in Tenerife. Police believe that the fires were purposely started and are probing the suspected arson. By Saturday, the wild blazes had displaced more than 12,000 people. The fires began on Wednesday last week in a national park near the Mount Teddy volcano. The owner of a Christian coffee shop in America's Colorado says that his business is bearing the brunt of members of the ill feeling of the LGBTQ community and left-wing supporters. Jamie Sanchez is accusing them of trying to shut down his drip cafe which was launched this year to help his mission of helping the homeless. The cafe is an endeavour to offer employment and jobs to the homeless. Sanchez said that the goal is to work alongside the homeless so that they can be mentored. But he said that Drip Cafe has had to put up with people gathering outside and accusing the organisation of spreading homophobia. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.